Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to tell you what is virtual server. Everything in F5 revolves around the virtual server. This virtual server is also known as the VIP. We call it as a VIP. So why we call it as VIP? Because this is a virtual IP and that is not available in any of the interface. That's why we call it as a virtual IP. And that's why we also call it as a virtual server because there's nothing physical or any memory or something allocated for that one. So let's jump onto the GUI of F5. Here we are. So inside the local traffic, there is a local traffic option here. You can click it and there is option of the virtual server. So right now I have deleted whatever the previously available virtual server were there so that I can show you exactly how to create it. So here at the right side, you can click on create. Once you click uh, create option, this web form type of things opens. Very first thing is the name, name of the virtual server. So for example, you are creating a service for SSH okay or http or something else or you are creating a service for your website so if i'm creating a service for my website let's say sapm security then i will give name as a https or 443 okay so usually our websites works on the 443, but here I will suggest prefer to create for AT. Okay. But usually in the production environment, most of the things run on the port 443, that is HTTPS. So you can give something like HTTPS and 443. Description you can give some details or the change number under which you are creating this activity or if you are doing another project then you can mention the project name that why you are creating type there are multiple types 98 percent or 99 percent we use this standard but there are some other options as well like forwarding layer 2 forwarding ip performance http performance layer 4 different others are also available it's just on your choice but 98 percent we use standard these I will be covering in the like upcoming sessions that what are these and in details. Okay. Source address that from which of the source IPs people can connect to your website or reach this virtual server. So this is called basically the source IP and source IP we put usually as 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. It means that anyone can connect. Whenever you mention 0.0.0, .0 it means I permit all the IP addresses to connect to it. If you want to restrict it to any specific subnet, any specific IP addresses, you can mention it here. Next thing is the destination address. So destination address is basically known as a virtual IP for what you are creating. like. This is the virtual IP basically, or you can say virtual server that people here in outside world, they will try to access. So that's why I'm going to create this 100.1.1.1. I went here and I will create this 100.1.1.1. Next option is our service port. So service port usually for the production environment we prefer any website under https but this is a lab setup and i do not have any service running on 443 so i will go for http once you select this service here automatically the port number comes the corresponding port number of that service state 
I want that to be disabled. Like whenever this virtual server will be created, you want to keep that in the enabled state or disabled state. So let it enabled or I can keep it disabled. So what will happen that uh, it will be created in the disabled state and later on, whenever I want, I can enable it. But you can keep that enabled as well, not a problem. It will be you know, created or configured in the enable state directly. Whatever you want, you can choose according to your requirement. Why we do that? Sometimes we do not want that people hit directly here. We keep the configuration ready. Everything is set up, but just I put it in the disabled state that even people try to access it, they cannot access because I keep that disabled. So it's your choice. Okay. So let's keep it disabled as of now. Next thing is your DH profile. So we are not using any DH profile, but if you want, you can use any of these DOH proxies and server profiles. Protocol, because this is HTTP is our TCP protocol. So I'm going to select it as a TCP here. But if you are using any specific protocol there, like UDP or SCTP or IPsec one, you can select it from this option. So if you are using that protocol as TCP, you also have to use the TCP profile. If you are using some other options, you can explore according to your requirement as per your need, and then you can use that. Protocol profile server. So we were going to use the client profile here. HTTP profile client. So we do not use usually here. We keep it as a none, but if you want, you can use this HTTP, HTTP split or HTTP transparent. In the detail, I will cover this profile section once again because the profile in itself is a vast topic. I cannot cover uh, profiles as well in this session of this virtual server. So I will be covering this in the upcoming session whenever I will be taking session for the profiles in detail. FTP profile. So here we are using HTTP service. So obviously, we are not going to use this FTP, RSTP, or this PPTP profiles. So if I would have been using port 443, in that case, SSL profile client, that which SSL profile it is you will be using, right? So right now I'm using port 80 there. So it's not essential that I, I don't need any certificate or SSL. But in case I was using 403 or HTTPS. In that case, I will use this client SSL. And this is the SSL profile of a server. Okay, so what people usually do, they create a certificate profile for that specific website, attach it here, and add it in this virtual server. What does this mean? That whenever you are accessing any website, right? For example, here, so you see that it is having some certificate with the HTTPS. That cer certificate comes from your F5 if your certificate is presented by the F5. There are both the options. Let's say, let me show you here. If this is your topology, And this machine here accessing the website which is hosted in any of these servers. So there are two options for the certificate. The certificate can be provided from this F5, or that can also be provided by the server. It's totally on our choice that where we have configured the certificate and which certificate we want to present in front of host or any machine which is trying to connect it. So if you want to present or install certificate on the F5 here, so in that case, you have to use this option. You have to attach a certificate under the SSL profile server and you have to give the certificate. So if your certificate is like your website is external, 
okay or public facing in that case you need a certificate with the ca signed well known ca will be signing that your certificate and then that certificate you will be using if you use only self signed in that case your browser might be throwing error like this not secure or an error like this okay whenever this is self signed whenever this is ca signed then there is no error so this is very essential and most of the things are revolving around the certificate and it creates an outage as well in the production environment just because of the certificate and it is always renewed in the timely manner and always kept in the monitoring all right so i'm going to remove this because uh, i'm using port 80 here okay so these all the profiles are not related to us like port 80 so that's why we are not using them service profile we can use according to our requirement if we want but right now i will not use any of them okay smtp profile does nothing next thing is our vlan and tunnel traffic so here what we are want to send it enabled or disabled so right now i'm sending all vlans and tunnels traffic through it another very important part is our source address translation source address translation means whenever you have the connectivity from this f5 from here let's suppose this machine requested something to the f5 and then f5 will be sending that request to the server like this so what is happening that do you want to change the ip address here do you want to do the nat here or you don't want to do that so if you do not do the nat then what will be happening your source ip will be going to the server in case you enable snat or automap in that case the destination ip will be of the server and the source ip here is changed of the interface this interface ip so usually from here let's suppose you initiated some traffic so the source ip was this ip and the destination ip was the ip address of this virtual server this web right that's where the traffic was traveling behind the load uh, before the load balancer once it cross it after the load balancer link the communication between the load balancer and the server in that case your destination ip will be this the actual server ip like any of them whatever the wherever it is going because then the round robin fashion so either it's going on server 1 server 2 and server 3 so it is decided by your load balancer that where it is going accordingly that destination ip will be there so actually it will be the server ip okay the so destination will be any of the server ip and the source ip will be your this interface ip here if you enabled the snat or the auto map option if you do not enable that in that case this source ip will be going directly this ip got it if you still confusion feel free to contact me or ask me the question we'll be happy to help so that's what it is doing here and because of this also i have seen many issues in the production environment if you miss off this then server do not respond or like uh, every configuration is working but still page is not coding okay so here you have to do it so right now i'm just keeping it as it is so that my ip address can go there in the server okay content derived so i do not want to rewrite anything and html profile also i want to keep it none i session profile is basically the sessions it is creating so let it as it is whatever you don't know this is like thumb rule whatever you don't know do not mess it up with anything because i will be covering these in the sessions but it could be like you are new to the f5 and you are configuring anything in the production environment or anywhere and if you don't know anything just do not mess up keep that default because the products are smart enough and they keep the things in the default so that they can be working okay next thing is our your i rules 
i rules are like uh, tcl codes and you can make your f5 work anything you want what you want to do you can like do programming of your f5 so this i rule is in itself a very vast topic so that i will be covering in the could be like in the at the last but i will be covering because this is very important in any of the f5 next thing is policies if you want to define any specific policies that which traffic should be allowed which should not be allowed that you can configure it here under the policies next thing is your default pool pool is basically a set of servers where basically your actual request will be going okay so right now if i go it here so if you requested any page or basically you try to reach the virtual ip address right you hit it which was just created but once the request lands on the f5 load balancer then where basically it is should go what are the servers which will be serving that request that is defined by that pool okay so that's what it means that pool is basically the list of the servers which will be serving your request in actual okay because this is a virtual ip it's not the uh, thing which is processing your request it is not having a database it having nothing right this is just a virtual ip actual thing will be inside the pool all right so right now i'm not adding any pool and i will modify it later to add the pool right so i just click on finished once i click it my virtual server is created so you see this is in the black color because i selected to create this pool in the disabled state you see if i go it here then i said that is state as a disabled okay you see that this is unknown or disabled availability is unknown or disabled so that's why it gained on the created on the disabled state but i want to enable it so you don't have to commit here to enable it you can do it from there itself okay so let's suppose you created it you want to enable it you can select it here and click on the enable and that's how your server is enabled so now we can create the virtual server like this but that's how no job is not done we have to create the pool as well as the nodes that's basically the actual servers so that i'll be covering in the next video and i will add that pool in this virtual server all right guys so let's stop it here see you in the next video this entire course of f5 load balancer is not going to be free forever it is only till the time i complete this course but in case you want to access it in a very nominal price i have given a limited time offer you can buy this only in 2 dollars or in 99 rupees only if you enroll till the time i finish this course you can go to this link here i will give this link in the description and you can enroll it in just 99 rupees or in 2 dollars later on this is not going to be 14 double line this is going to be 3000 and corresponding amount in the dollar if you have any questions related to this course or any query you can contact me on whatsapp this is my whatsapp number here you can also reach me over email you can send me over email this is my email id thank you see you soon